and we are back again specifically i because i'll be sharing this conversation on health today and we're talking about stress and trauma management as we have alluded before with sakwa in our small discussion now we have the professional with us here in studio i've been joined by uh annabelle gishure who's a counseling psychologist also a child psychologist karibu sana annabelle thank you for having me glad to have you all right so um you want to tell us a little bit about your background before we get to the topic yeah today's a very special day mm -hmm. because today is world mental health day yeah and uh, i'm a child psychologist by training mm -hmm and a counseling psychologist generally i'm a counseling psychologist but my specialty is children, children. child psychology mm -hmm. and uh, i'm passionate about creating a mental health culture because we need to start having mental health conversations to steer a community of mental wellness people mm -hmm. so that you are your brother's keeper when it comes to mental health the way when you need fitness you go to the gym yeah Th the same thing when it comes to mental health mm -hmm. you have a safe space in your family you have a safe space in your spouse mm -hmm. so that is the culture i'm creating through my docket of mental health okay amazing that's an amazing thing that you're doing so like, getting into the topic stress and trauma management for stress i believe everyone knows <coughs> you know stress we all you know go through stress at some point in life uh, what, what is trauma for someone who, who doesn't really know what trauma is? Um, so trauma is an emotional response mm -hmm. that occurs after a distressing event. Mm -hmm. So now we have acute trauma, which happens because of a single event. An accident happened. Mm -hmm. That is a single event. Then we have now chronic trauma, which happens prolonged domestic violence. Mm. So you have lived for 15 years watching domestic violence in your home. That is chronic trauma. trauma. Then we have complex, mm -hmm. which is multiple. So multiple events. There is grief and loss. You've lost a loved one. You've witnessed uh, domestic violence. You have had an accident or you've had emo undealt with emotional um, issues mm -hmm. that are undealt with. So now trauma is an emotional response from a distressing event mm -hmm. so yeah. what does trauma lead to acute trauma what does it lead to uh, what are the you know um not really repercussions but what do they lead to um so for any human being mm. you need to be productive holistically by holistically, you have the wheel of life. Why the wheel of life includes your emotional health, imagine. your emotional health, your physical health, your mind, that is cognitive, and then your social well-being. So you need to be able to relate with yourself. You need to be able to relate with people. You also need to be able to be productive in the family, in the workplace. So when you have undealt with trauma, so if you have undealt with trauma, it means you've not healed is not healed from all these events. So they are in your unconscious, but they are leaving your conscious. When you are unconscious, but they are leaving your conscious. Yeah. yeah, so that is where you find, uh, if you've not healed from trauma, you will not be productive because any event reminds you of the traumatic event. Okay. So that means you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And you can only move forward if you heal. The first, the first process of healing with trauma or any uh, stressing event mm -hmm. is acknowledging Why that two it five four? Imagine. So most of us don't heal because we're still in denial. It didn't happen, but it is, it is in your unconscious. So, but it is leading your conscious. So the first thing is acknowledge that it happened and accept, accept that I need, you need, I need to do something about it. Need, you needing to do something about it is maybe getting help. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, every traumatic event can lead to PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Stress disorder. Mm -hmm. Now that means that calls for a professional to step in to help you. That might be a counselor, a psychologist, that might be a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. And also 
when you acknowledge and accept, you'll also be able to understand your triggers. All right. So you will not go to environments where you're, triggered. you're going to be triggered. Because if you get triggered, it means you're going to have an outburst of emotion. Remember, trauma is an emotional response. Mm. So it means your emotions will be imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So any trigger could take you back to, the, to, where, to when the event happened. Mm -hmm. And so that means you will not be able to relate with the people around you. That is colleagues, family. Also, you will not be able to relate with yourself mm -hmm. because you're stuck. So you will not be able to seek help. And anytime you seek help regarding uh, tro any stressing event, PTSD, any stressing event, the professional will be, we are all different. The way you'll deal with trauma is not the way I'll deal with trauma. Yeah. The stage you're in in trauma is not the stage I'm in in trauma. So that professional will be able to help you heal. Mm -hmm. I always call it the hay mechanism. So the hay mechanism is you're going to be able to heal. Mm -hmm. And as you heal, you're going to evolve. Because as you heal, you need to become, uh, you need to reveal the better version of you post trauma. Okay. And then you're going to yield. So yielding is being productive in the workplace, in the being productive as a holistic individual. Right. And that is why I always tell, I, I, I tell everybody, just have a hey. Me saying to you, hey, is have you healed? Are you evolving? Oh. Okay. And are, are you, you yielding? Yeah. Wow, I love that. Are you, um, okay, uh, the hey, are you healing? Are yeah. you evolving? Yes. Are you yielding? Yeah. I love that. So now, how does someone know? Uh, let's use this as an example. Someone has just uh, gone through a loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because uh, they also give stages to, to grief. Mm -hmm. And maybe you are not really over it. How do you really know that this is, this is something that I need to seek help for, that I've not really healed? Because some people, I, I believe, heal on their own without seeking external help. But how do you know that you have not healed and that you need help? Uh, the first step of knowing you've not healed is stress is normal. Mm -hmm. But if stress uh, prevents you from being productive, now that becomes abnormal. So it means it interferes with your day-to-day -day activity. So if it is uh, interfering with your day-to-day -day activity, it means you emotional, emotionally you're not well. Socially, mm -hmm. you, we, you have withdrawn from people. Uh, you're not motivated about anything. Whatever used to excite you doesn't. doesn't excite you anymore. And then you just you just have overwhelming emotions of sadness. Mm -hmm. You're not yourself. You hear people say, I feel I'm not myself. Yeah. If you probe further, you'll find there is an event, probably it's loss or some, you know, loss can be loss of a loved one, loss of a job, job yeah. loss of a relationship. Any type of loss. Any type of loss. So if you're not able, you're not productive, whatever used to excite you, you're, not, you're no longer motivated, you're flat. Mm. And you're withdrawn, you just want, you know, all of a sudden you love to be alone, you love to be with your own space. The people who are like that, introverts are like that. Mm -hmm. But if you've noticed, so there are two dimensions. One, you can withdraw, and the other things so you can be, too talkative because you're seeking affirmation. You just want to share. You just want to air it out. Mm -hmm. If it has changed you as a person, your personality, and also if it has, if it has changed your emotional um, arena, so you're no longer you have outbursts. Mm -hmm. Anything can make you angry. Okay, easily triggered. Pardon? You're easily triggered. You're easily you're easily triggered, and also you're getting into self-destructive behavior. Mm -hmm. So some people seek, uh, they cope by getting into self-destructive behavior. Such as? Uh, all of a sudden, you, alcoholism or mm -hmm. substance abuse. And it could also be overeating. It, de it depends, it varies with different, different personalities and different people. Okay. Yeah. You also mentioned that there are stages uh, with trauma. Can you mm -hmm. give us the stages? What are they? The stages of trauma. So the acute, uh, acute, chronic, and complex. Okay. So those are state. I thought those are types. Those are types. Mm -hmm. Do you have stages like for acute trauma? Is there a stage that you know this is 
this is too much or is acute trauma better than chronic trauma, chronic trauma better than complex trauma? Uh, so trauma is trauma, mm -hmm. whether it's acute, whether it's chronic, whether it's complex. Mm. The, what the difference is, the, there is one event. So one event could have happened and ha has become a traumatic event. Yeah. Then when it's chronic, it's prolonged. So you have seen it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So for example, if your child is six years and has seen domestic violence and right now they're 25 years. That so is that's chronic. That is chronic because it's prolonged. Mm -hmm. Then we have complex, which is multiple. So mm. there was an accident, you have lost a loved one, um, and a lot of other traumatic events. So that means you have not healed from each and every event. Mm -hmm. Where it's complex, it's because for you to unpack that trauma, you will have to deal with many events. Okay. So do, would I say that that is more, uh, in terms of intensity, that is more um intense than the other types the other two types yeah we could say it's more intense mm -hmm. because you have not dealt with a couple of a things. couple of things mm -hmm. but the bottom line is trauma is trauma trauma, trauma is trauma mm -hmm. so even if it's a single event mm -hmm. it could be so severe for someone based on their personality and based on who they are mm -hmm. and the complex um, now, sup the surprising thing is mm -hmm. most adults are actually dealing with complex trauma mm -hmm. without knowing. Okay, because you've gone through a lot of yes. traumas without actually healing from any yes. of them. And that is why only now I urge us who are bringing forth the generation, our children now will be generation alpha. Mm -hmm. Starting from home, ensure that your home is a trauma-free space. Mm -hmm. So that by the time you're getting to the world, they are, they are able to be empowered to deal with uh, what is coming from the world. Mm -hmm. But we could say complex is the most intense, but the bottom line is trauma is trauma. I don't want someone to say that mm -hmm. mine is just a single event. I don't need help. Okay. Mine is not severe because it's not complex. Yeah. Bottom line is you need to heal. Trauma is trauma. Trauma is trauma yeah. either way. And uh, you've mentioned that we need to create a safe space in our homes, mm. you know, for the next generation. What are some of the other ways in which we can deal with, uh, we can deal with trauma in our own capacity or we can prevent trauma? Um, so the first, the first thing is awareness. Mm -hmm. So I, I call it the three C's. So the first one is connecting with yourself. Okay. For you to, what I mean by connecting with yourself is, I know what uh, works for me. I know what doesn't work for me. I know what I have not healed from. Mm -hmm. And I know what, how it's affecting me now. So by connecting with myself is, hey, you need, uh, you need, to, you need to get help for this. You yourself first be a safe space. How do you become a safe space to yourself? What do you tell yourself? Communicating with yourself. Mm -hmm. I always say the most important words in this world is I am. Mm -hmm. I am because you create it. Okay. So if every day I'm telling myself I am, I am not healed, even if I'm going to see a counselor. You won't be healed. I will not heal mm. because that is, the, that is what I'm communicating with myself. So you yourself first, mm -hmm. before getting validation from out there, be a safe space to yourself. Being a safe space to yourself is, mm -hmm. I acknowledge this happened to me. Uh, I am different from, the, from what, I and the event are different. Okay. So the event happened doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make me a lesser being. But me healing from it, it means I am writing a story and it means I can I'm actually going to evolve and be a better version of me okay so be a safe and you being a safe space to yourself it means you're going to take guard of your emotions mm. and also you're going to take guard of your environment so if you're a parent you're going to take guard of your family if you're a CEO if you you have you're leading an organization you're going to take guard of your of your 
organization. Yeah. So you being a safe space to yourself means you're also going to take care of others. Right. But you cannot take care of others. Now that is where we go wrong. Mm. We try to take care of others without taking care of ourselves. Okay. So that will also help you have coping mechanisms. Mm. So what works, because you already know your triggers, what environments don't I survive in? What environments trigger my event? You will, you will not expose yourself to those, uh, to those environments. But with time, as you're working with a psychologist, you're going to be exposed so that you will know that you've healed when you expose yourself to, the, to those environments okay. and they no longer trigger you. Uh -huh. They will remind you of the events that happened, but they will no longer have s such an impact that it will lead you to sadness or it will get you to outbursts of guilt, shame, mm -hmm. different emotional responses. And so you have a coping routine. Mm -hmm. It's the same, th it's, let me use an example that we all use. Mm -hmm. uh, you avoid some people because she's going to come, so what people say is, I avoid so and so yeah. because they're going to tell me about their problems. <laughs> So when in such, an, in such a scenario, you ask the person, what does them venting to you remind you of? Okay. So you'll find it reminds them of something in the past that they've not healed from, and that is why they're avoiding. Okay. So what we do is we run away from, the heal from healing from trauma. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is accept that it happened, acknowledge that I need to do something about it, mm -hmm get information of where do I need to get help from. Mm -hmm. You have psychologists, you have psychiatrists, and then have a coping mechanism in your life so that you're able to be productive. And the, uh, the final one is be a safe space to yourself so that you're a safe space to the world. Mm -hmm. And when you're a safe space to the world, it means you have already healed. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I love that. Especially the part where, where we're supposed to be a safe space to ourselves first before we be a safe space to others. Mm -hmm. And now um, there's this um, assumption, I don't know if it's true, that when you have trauma, you tend to attract someone who has also had some sort of trauma. And then when you come together, especially in a relationship setup, uh, in a marriage setup, so you have trauma that probably childhood you've been raised with some violence, form of violence, and then your partner also comes from the same setting, and then it becomes another toxic environment where you also raise your children from. Is it something that's actually proven to be true? Yes, uh, and how I would respond to that is, mm -hmm. if you've not healed, you're going to, you've not healed mm -hmm. as a person, so. There is what you know, you seem, like the example you've given, there is what is familiar to your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you're going to attract what you are and you're going to attract environments you have thrived in. You have thrived in a domestic violent environment. Mm. That is what you know. So you attracting, you're not, you're not going to attract that environment because you, you, you have not dealt with that trauma, you're going to attract that environment because that is what you have seen. That is what you know. Mm -hmm. So there are feelings that you didn't get from your family that you're going to get from this environment. Mm -hmm. So for example, I didn't get love from my family and I get a man who is showing me the love that I didn't get. Even if that man has narcissistic tendencies, mm -hmm. you're going to fall for that man because they are, they are answering the question you are asking. Mm. The question you're asking is, I need, who can give me love? He's answering, I can, I can give, give you love. love. So you attract environments you have not healed from. I run away from, you attract who you are. Okay. Because when you say you attract who you are, it means... You are, you and the traumatic event are the you're same. One. Mm -hmm. You're one. Mm -hmm. So we always need to differentiate the traumatic event and from you. You. Mm. you can make a decision to heal from your tra from the traumatic event mm -hmm. and evolve. Okay. And after after that after attracting that environment, 
people come to know later, I am seeing repetitions, I'm seeing patterns of my family in my marriage. Mm -hmm. But it's because it, it was answering a call. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes a lot of sense <laughs> because you know you wonder how that actually happens but you um when you you get some someone that answers to you you know a question that you've had that it, you get into such a setup now let's talk about stress stress management stress is something that everyone goes through i believe it's normal to have stress right uh, you'll yes. tell us mm -hmm. then how do you if it's normal how do women need stress and what uh, just you know having high high stress levels lead to again um, so, Yeah, so stress is normal mm -hmm. everybody if I don't know who doesn't have stress Stress is normal now. We have two kinds of stress. We have you stress and distress. So you stress is you, positive you stress, stress like why or you or You stress you you or you the, stress okay. uh -huh. you stress and we have distress you stress is positive stress mm -hmm. so positive stress helps you to become a better person. Okay. Then we have distress, mm -hmm. which is now negative stress. It has negative uh, outcomes. Okay. Uh, so now, and we always need to differentiate that. Between the two. So okay. tell us about you stress first. You stress is, for example, um, I have a family. Mm -hmm. I am a colleague. I've gone back to school. Okay. I'm going to have stress because I've gone back to school. But... Going back to school, will it, will it have a negative no. outcome? Okay, it, it helps you become a better person. It helps you become a better person. So what you need to, to do is have a, co you, you need to balance. Mm -hmm. So how will you cope as being a mother, being a wife, being a student, being a colleague? Mm -hmm. But now it can become, an, it can become, a, it can have a negative outcome. If let's say you have added the school, you've gone back to school, then you've now neglected the family. Mm -hmm. So now your children are going to be distressed yeah. because they, you're no longer there. There's a gap. Yeah. So we have always differentiate what, is, what you're feeling. Is it eustress? Is it eustress or distress? Is it distress? <laughs> okay. So how do you deal with stress? The first thing of dealing with stress is div give what you're feeling a name. What are you feeling? Mm -hmm. So that is being aware, self-awareness. The mm -hmm. first thing is be aware of, this is what I'm dealing with. Okay. So what can I do about it? Mm -hmm. What can you do about it is now you need to tap into what I said, connect with yourself. Connect with yourself. So what do I need? You know, most of the times we tell people to ask for help. Mm -hmm. You cannot ask for help if you actually don't know what you're kind of help you need yeah what help do you need mm. so the first thing is be aware of what you're feeling mm -hmm. accept and acknowledge i am feeling this and don't you are not what is stressing you all right you need to differentiate between the two between the two mm -hmm. and after accepting now you need now to have what can i do about it can i have a coping strategy for it what are your coping mechanisms to be productive do i need to seek help and if i need to seek help do i need to see a psychologist do i need what what do i need or who do i need to reach out to mm -hmm. so you connect with yourself communicate with yourself in terms of affirmations by affirmations is annabelle you can do this mm -hmm. annabelle we're going to get through this yeah uh, it's just a matter of time it's not over until i win yeah because the first thing, stress in life, as a normal human being, when going through life, you're going to have stress encounters. And these stress encounters, you have a choice. Do you want the stress encounters to make you a better person or do you want them to leave you stuck? Mm -hmm. So if, no, it is your choice. That is your call. So in such an environment, what can I get from the environment I mean? Do I need to change my environment? Do I need to seek, uh, to seek better, maybe better initiatives? Plug in into places where you feel safe. Okay. I always tell people, if I am stressing you and I have an initiative, don't come to please me. <laughs> 
because at the end of the day you will not be productive okay so in every encounter the first thing you should ask yourself am i productive mm -hmm. if i'm not productive is it because uh i have not healed from a traumatic event mm -hmm. or is it because there's a stress factor okay in whatever is not making me product that is why people actually stay in workplaces where it's toxic but at the end of the day they know it's toxic mm -hmm. but they can't do something about it mm -hmm. they're not applying to other jobs they're not doing anything yes okay so now that will lead you to depression. Now, the aftermath of prolonged stress is depression. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to depression, now, when you get to depression, now that needs medical attention. Mm -hmm. Because now it means you're no longer productive in your life. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I would say, would that, is it okay to say that prolonged stress is now the, like, mm -hmm. it leads to now, um, okay, not really leads to depression. I'm trying to see if there are levels of stress, basically. Do you, are there like stages of stress, like there are stages of, you know, what leads to depression or types of uh, stress that people do have that can lead to depression? Or is it that prolonged stress that leads to depression? It is prolonged stress that leads to depression. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by prolonged stress leads to depression it's, it's something that has been there with time. You have, it has grown uh, in due time. Mm -hmm. So you have not dealt with. Okay. So in any, any we've, the first thing we've agreed is stress is normal. And then when you, you have now the distress, which have a negative outcome, if you're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So it means you, it's going to be undealt with. When it's not dealt with, that is when now it gets to a place where you are not able to qu you're not able to be productive as a person. Yeah. As a person is you you're no longer your safe space. So that leads you self harm ideas will come in, sui suicidal thoughts will come in. Now that we have hit depression. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now um, how do you cope with stress that are almost like almost beyond you to to an extent? Um, stress that is brought about by people that you can really control. I'm ready to get a good example. Or maybe in a work setup, uh, you're in a toxic environment and at that particular point in time, you can't really um, get a new job or you have tried but you're not really getting a new job and it's taking a toll on you. So how do you create a safe environment for yourself even in that space? So I always have one mantra mm -hmm. where the whole world can be toxic, mm -hmm. but you cannot control the whole world. The only person you can control is you, yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we get to that understanding of the only person you can control is yourself, it means the only person who can act mm -hmm. on the stress factor at the moment is yourself. So I'm in this workplace. What can I do about it? I can't leave. I can't leave. I can only manage. To, I can only manage to stay in that toxic environment. So every day, let's say every day, I am stressed to a point I'm having, I'm unproductive in that setup. Exactly. So which means physically, emotionally, holistically, you're drained. You're drained. Mm -hmm. So which means it can actually even leading you to getting to medical cases or psychological cases. Mm -hmm. The only person you can control is yourself. So what I ask you is what can you do in that setup? Mm -hmm. So and you'll find someone can so probably I'm using the example you've actu you've you've used. Mm -hmm. Someone can 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 say I can talk to my supervisor to talk to the person who's stressing me. Alright. What if they don't change? Yeah. There is an occurrence they might not change. Mm -hmm. So I, as a person, need to create a coping strategy. In, th in such a situation, the best thing is to leave. <laughs> that is the best thing. Exit because it, you are unproductive. Mm -hmm. So it means you're drained, which means it is going to have, it's going to have an imp a, a prolonged impact 
you staying in that space. Mm -hmm. But now that you can't live, have a coping strategy. Do you need a safe space to debrief with? You need like to debrief with someone mm -hmm. so that you can even seek therapy. So you're still working there, but you are with, you're walking the journey with a counselor. Mm -hmm. So the counselor is supporting you through that process. If you can't, you can't go to a counselor, you can also choose coping with journaling. But in such, a, in such a situation, there are situations where you do not need to stay there. You need to leave. Mm -hmm. And you can never see you can never see the next step if you don't make the first step. Okay. We are always afraid of leaving toxic environments because toxic environments are comfortable. Mm -hmm. Toxic environments are they have a reward because they have a reward. You're afraid of making the first step yeah. because of losing that reward. Mm -hmm. And I always this is a mantra I always have is getting. Creating a mental wellness culture for yourself is the best reward you'll ever give yourself. And you will never find it unless you take the first step. Okay. So it starts with you yourself as a person. Yes. All right. Now, we were discussing with my co-host earlier on in the morning about this topic. And he mentioned something about self-diagnosis of depression. Because we've said prolonged stress can lead to depression. So are you able, as a person, to to self-diagnose that I'm depressed, for sure I'm depressed? Or do you need to see a counselor or a professional for that? Yeah, for you to be diagnosed with depression, you, you can diagnose yourself for stress. <laughs> I am stressed. <laughs> stressed right. Because you know yourself when you're not stressed. Mm -hmm. But depression you ha has to be diagnosed by a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. Because they have to run assessments, okay, so that they are able to know uh, where you're at when it comes to de to depression. Some people actually self-diagnose themselves with depression when it's not depression; <laughs> it's actually stress. Stress. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we uh, lo use the term loosely nowadays. I'm feeling depressed. I'm depressed, but uh, in fact, you're just stressed. Yeah. Uh, so now, um, you being a child um, psychologist, also. How does trauma affect children? How do you support, how do you know that this child is, has, you know, has trauma as a parent? Um, so as a parent, when I, al I always tell parents, mm -hmm. as a present parent, you will always know traumatic events that affect children. And nowadays, our children, traumatic events are very, like transitioning from one school to another. That is change. Really, yeah. Um, so let me use an example with teens, mm -hmm. teenagers. Teenagers are in that period of identity where they are seeking identity. So in schools, uh, a child goes through body shaming. Mm -hmm. That is an event that to a parent might be... Um, they have only told you that you're chubby. That's wrong. <laughs> What's wrong? You're beautiful. But to that teen, is they, they've been told you're ugly, uh, no one will ever love you. To them now, it, if it is not dealt with at teenage, in due time, it's going to be, it might cause trauma. Mm -hmm. So trauma too, let's say it's a boy who told her that you're chubby. Mm -hmm. So this child, this girl, will no longer have relationship with boys. Mm -hmm. Or they, they're going to hate boys. Or they're going to hate men when they're 25. Okay. Because of that one event. So as a parent, mm -hmm. be present. When, you pre when you're a present parent, you'll be able to know when your child changes personality. Mm -hmm. So your child used to be... Uh, your child is has an, is an, an energetic child, no longer has energy, has withdrawn, all of a sudden wants to be in their room, and then they have emotional outbursts. So what parents say is, my child has become rude. Mm -hmm. So when you come and tell me your child has become rude, the first thing I'll ask you is, mm -hmm. could you tell me what has happened in the past one month? Okay. So that past one month, you'll find there is an event that has happened. So, for example, they had 
they had you not, not verbally fighting as a with mom and dad mm -hmm. so to them is maybe mom and dad are fighting because of me mm -hmm. but you actually don't know that your child knows so as a parent if you're not present so because the child wants to dominate now what most of us mistake is rebellion is rebellion for children is communication they are communicating to you mm -hmm. that you're not i need you to hear me you're not hearing you're me not hearing you have not been present i am i need you to sit down and listen to me and i call it parenting from the lens mm -hmm. so parenting from the lens is the lens the eye without the lens you can't see okay so the l is listen to understand and not to respond so what do most of us parents do <laughs> we listen to respond Mm -hmm. Listen to understand. A child will start a story from ice cream, but what they want to tell you is, Mom, you have not been doing this and this for me. Okay. Listen to understand. So then the E is engage. The way you'd engage your firstborn is not the same way you're going to engage your secondborn. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand their personalities. You need to understand what works for them. And also the schools that they have, we're taking our children to, help our children evolve with new uh, traits, mm -hmm. which is a plus for us because the 21st century, the children are growing very fast. And that is why you'll find a grade six child, a grade six child actually results like a form one child. True, <laughs> very mature. Yes. <laughs> so you will not engage them with the same, uh, with the same spots. Mm -hmm. So the end is nurture. As a parent, what do you want to nurture? I ask parents all the time, what do you want to nurture in your child? Mm -hmm. So what are you nurturing? What skill are you nurturing? So when you have, when you know what skill you're nurturing, it is one thing to be a parent. It's also another thing to nurture a skill. All parents want the best for their children, but what are you nurturing? Mm -hmm. So the moment you're aware of that, you'll be able to, you'll be able to, help your ch you'll be able to identify the traumatic events and help your children heal so that they're able to be productive mm -hmm. the end goal for every traumatic event is being productive okay. so which is your con you connect with yourself you communicate with yourself and you're able to create which is creation mm -hmm. so then the s is support mm -hmm. so what support does your child need so most of us are not able to support our children because we in the first place you don't know what they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So when children come to me for counseling, whatever they were brought for counseling, what they were brought for in counseling, is actually not what we are dealing with. We are dealing with things that happened one year ago, Something two ago. years ago. Oh, okay. So you're able to support your child mm -hmm. through the process. Because a child can see me for counseling at six years and also come back to me at 13 years. Mm. because those are developmental, different developmental milestones and also they're in different stages of life. So as they're evolving, evolve with them. Right. And in every stage, support them. Mm -hmm. Then the E is empower. The end, the end game of every event is empowerment. You're able to empower your child to be able to handle that without you. Tomorrow they're going to face a traumatic event without you. So when that happens, they are going to be able, you, have you have supported them and empowered them to the level where they can actually, mommy taught me this. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually pass on the baton and they are going to handle it. Okay. So that is how you create a culture of trauma is there and trauma will always be there because we are living in, 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 in the real life. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is heal and deal with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about, I've always had this question, you know, when people are going through um, loss of a loved one, especially, and there's grief, you, the children are usually just left out. Mm -hmm. So how do parents, because I think most parents don't know how, how to deal with the ch little children. How should they deal with um, children that are going through grief as well? Um, so the first, that now will depend with with the child, the child's personality, mm -hmm. understand your child. So the moment you understand your child, 
the first thing is listen to what to their grief language. We all have grief language. Mm -hmm. There's someone who's going to keep quiet, so they are going to shut down. By shutting down is they want to connect. They want to connect with with uh, the feelings and what the stage they are in in grief as a child. Mm. So as a child, as a teen, they want to connect with with um, with the feeling of the loved one. Mm -hmm. Now this also depends with who who th who the loss how close the yeah, how close they were with the person. So the first thing I always tell parents is allow your child to go through what they are feeling. Don't force it. Mm -hmm. So you'll find what most how most children respond is they are going to withdraw, they are going to shut down. Mm -hmm. So when they shut down, don't force them to, don't force them to, to, speak, to speak about it, but evo evolve with that child, follow that child. So there are other children who are going to be so strong. Now the, children, the child who becomes so strong, you find uh, people saying, hey, th the son is so strong because he's able to, he didn't even cry. Yeah, exactly. Yes. He didn't even cry. So now how that boy is resolving it is I am making daddy proud by being a man. By being strong. By mm -hmm. being strong. Mm -hmm. But his breakdown might come in after the burial after burial the burial is done and now that is where he needs support. Okay. So the first thing is be able to to know when your child needs the support and you can give that support but an external person also needs to give that support that is a psychologist mm -hmm. and so as a parent the best you can do is understand your grief you let's say you're grieving a family member both of you have lost a family member the way you deal with grief is different from the way your child is going to deal with grief accept that and just let your child know that I am here when you need anything. Mm -hmm. Now what we don't do is we, do not, we don't communicate. So you'll find you'll talk to your child, but your child is quiet. Th that, is, that, shows that is a traumatic event that needs to be dealt with. Okay. Because they're not able to communicate. Most children are not able to communicate when such uh, traumatic events happen happen especially now when it comes to loss mm -hmm. so as a parent communicate let them know that i am present whenever you need anything mm -hmm. i am going to hold your hand i'm going to support you but speak in a language they understand mm -hmm. they would speak to my child is not the way you'd speak to your child mm -hmm. and also differentiate get support as a parent you cannot give your child support when if you yourself you, are yeah. not okay. When you yourself, you're not okay. Mm -hmm. And that is why I always say, I always ask them, who is, an, who is a close person who was close with your child in this, uh, before this happened? That could be a person who could help in this journey because you need to also heal from your grief and your child also needs to heal from, from the grief. Mm -hmm. But b that family needs, needs a psychologist to work with this child because what we use is play therapy. Okay. You as a parent will not use play therapy. All right. But the best you can do in such is mm -hmm. you're not a professional, but be present mm -hmm. and communicate that because they feel alone. When they lose a loved one, they feel alone. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have so and so has left me. So there is a gap. How can you fill that gap? Are there routines that used to be there that they used to do with the person who has departed? Mm -hmm. What can you do about it? Yeah. So that the life, the life that was there before is still maintained, but it has positive memories. Okay. So that it doesn't have, and how you can do that is uh, by communicating it with them and also ensuring that those routines are there and also they have a positive they have a positive note on them mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but allow your child to feel the feelings of the grief and loss and accept. So the, f w the breakthrough of any loss and grief is closure. Okay. When you get to closure, you've healed, the, the child has healed and now they're seeing it from a positive lens. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're seeing it from, from a positive lens, it means it is a dear memory that they can, they can walk through with, with in their day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and they can still be productive in that area. Okay, wow, amazing, such great uh, insights. Um, before we close it up, because I've seen uh, time has really gone, mm -hmm. uh, you're really passionate about creating mental health culture in Africa. So how can we, uh, as a people, um, engage towards achieving this goal? Uh, the hay culture, I call it the hay culture, mm -hmm. where it starts with you. Ensure you have healed mm -hmm. and you ha you're evolving and yielding. Yielding means being productive. So I always ask people, have you said hey to yourself this morning? Mm -hmm. Hey is having a mental wellness check-in every day. Um, how am I feeling today? What help do I need? If you're doing that with yourself mm -hmm. every day, you can be able to do it with someone else and then having these conversations of mental health we're having mental health conversations in our workplace in the family and in any community everything starts from the family so as parents are we starting these mental health conversations from the family level i like as a parent ask yourself do you have a mental wellness check-in with your children mm -hmm. or at the end of the day is hi hi let's eat dinner Good night. Uh -huh. So if you do that for 365 days in a year, it means your children, your children are opening up to someone else and not you. Not you. So they're getting their mental health check-in from elsewhere and not you. Mm. And so have a mental health check-in with yourself, with your family, with your colleagues. And if you are in, you're a stakeholder, ensure you have that for your systems. And... At the end of the day, creating a mental health culture starts with have, having awareness of mental, mental health. Mm -hmm. What are you doing about it? So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm creating a hey culture where I ensure you have healed, evolved, and you've healed up at the end of the day. And so as a country, we start from the family, we go to the community, mm -hmm. and then as a country, they are going to do, today is World Mental Health Day. You're going to see very many initiatives that are happening in the country. You yourself, have you ever plugged in a mental health initiative? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, have you ever plugged <laughs> in a mental health initiative? If you have never plugged into one, and you have not created one, even in your family, like for example, let me give an example of an initiative in a family. Their parents will tell me every Saturday, I need to take my daughter I have three girls that I need to take each daughter out by themselves oh. so that I know what is happening wow. in their life. Wow. That is a parent who is aware that I have three girls and these three girls are different. Mm. And I need to check, to have a mental wellness check-in with them individually so mm. that they are siblings. By the end of the day, they are growing as a person individually. individually. Mm -hmm. So do what you can in your space. And it is, I always say it's not over until we win. Okay. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Annabelle, for the amazing insights that uh, you have highlighted today. And uh, we wish to have you next time again for a different topic. Thank you. I enjoyed the conversation. All right. So that has been Annabelle Gishire, who's a child psychologist uh, by training and also generally a counseling psychologist, talking to us about stress and trauma management. I hope you've taken something from it. For me, it's the hey culture. Have you healed? Are you evolving? And have you yielded? Yielded means to be productive. That's my key takeaway from it. We're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back with the next conversation when, with Brian Sakwa. See you on the other side.